Well, without your props at last night's unique performance, you created a mime workshop for the audience. How successful was that for you, the performer? Well, I, had, I have done this quite often, but I have done this in uh, universities in America and sometimes in France. I never did it in England, but it was on special occasions, sometimes on television, because I found that speaking about mime and doing some demonstrations at the same time was very important to the public to understand that mime is not just a dumb show, as many think, or for children, uh, or put on on Christmas, as it is seen, you know, Punch and Judy. But it is a very serious art form. When I say serious, I don't mean that there are numbers which are only serious. There are funny numbers, but it, has, it is a high stylized form of art. <clears throat> and it is a very old tradition since the Greek and the Romans under the Commedia dell'arte. And matter of fact, in the 18th century and the 19th in England, the clown, the English clown, the circus, Grimaldi, then later in the 20s, in the early 20s, Chaplin, Buster Keaton, Stan Laurel, they were all coming from the English pantomime school, Fred Carlo, and there were also before them the Han Rondis. And as a matter of fact, there's a big tradition of English pantomime, which is not slapstick, but it, which is much refined. Now, to come to the 20th century, uh, I have created a new kind of style in mime, before me, there was only Barreau, then Etienne de Croux, Etienne de Croux first, mm -hmm. then Jean-Louis Barreau. Uh, but playing before the audience last night was um, an accident, because our props, our costumes that I have now, because you caught me just after my matinee for children, I did a show this afternoon, yes. and I kept my white face deep. I have not to describe him, you see it now. <laughs> here. And he has a top hat and a trembling flower. Well, uh, of course, he does not, I don't like to speak when I have my white face because the expression of the face speak by themselves yes. and the body too. But let's forget I have a mask on. Yeah. And yesterday night I played without mask, without props. It was a demonstration, improvised and a sort of lecture. It's very tricky because when you are going to talk before a student audience, they know they're going to hear a lecture and demonstration. But when you have an audience before you paid just to be entertained, yes. well, it was But I was told that the English audience sometimes like somebody who is in trouble or in, in a bad situation. They, they feel sorry for him. And when I entered the stage without nothing, just there, just like costume, nothing, I had the general applause. And from the beginning, it was very hard too because I did not want to get the point then, then you see, because and it started. But I must say that they were wonderful. Well, you, you seem to be very cunning because you started with very simple things. Yes. And by the end of the performance, you were doing your yes. complete I, sketches. I entered from showing what mime is, uh, the identification of men with all elements which surround us. Yes. Uh, the four elements, fire, wind, air, earth, and water. Of course, I gave them examples like going against the wind going upstairs and downstairs, going on a tightrope, showing that mime creates space. And the timing, which has a flow like music, I did also the cage, where I yes. I tried to show that you can make from abstract to concrete. And I, I showed, for example, you can lean against something, or, or, or you can take a glass, smell a flower, uh, I didn't do that, but I should do it now, show uh, the yeah. wings of a butterfly, you know, which could... die, you know, and then the timing, the silence, gives a flow like music. I wanted to say that every gesture has a rhythm, yes. like words. When I say, I wandered lonely at the cloud on high whales and hills, when all at once a sun crowd, a host of golden daffodils, something like this. The poet has chosen verbs uh, which are not only poetic, but gives an image which is beyond the reality. Mm -hmm. The curfew told the knell of parting day, 
The lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lea, the ploughman homewards plods his weary way and lead the world to darkness and to thee. It's not to show you that I know a little English poetry, but it's to show you that what the poet does in choosing his rhythm, his phrase, the mime, the musician, the ballet dancer, the word actor, do it in choosing every word to yes. capture your imagination. And I say that every gesture has to be combined and has a grace, a definition, a style, and a meaning. Fine. Um, but in fact, lis listening to you last night and listening to you now, I realize that your uh, use of words is very controlled and very sensitive. Have you never been tempted before to use a word or in fact desire to become an actor? As a well, you're right. Uh, I would have be become an actor, in the matter of fact, this is what I wanted to become when I was 20 years old, even 19. But I decided at 20 to become a mime because there was a place for that. At the Charles Dulin School, which is a dramatic school in Paris at that time, uh, after the Second World War, it is like Old Vic mm -hmm. National Theatre in, in London. And Charles Dulin was for us like Laurence Olivier is for the young generation. Uh, there, I wanted to become an actor, but at the same school there was pantomime lessons, a pantomime course by Etienne de Croux, and I was captured because all my life I felt that the theatre has also to be visual, that there, is situ there are situations which go beyond words, and what Shakespeare wanted to say, and what he said so beautifully, but all what is beyond the words and is left to our imagination, this mime can do very well. And for me, mime is the essence of human being, of a human being. Yes. And then I started to create my mime grammar, learning from the crew, going to BIP, and creating a mime theater for 12 years in France, with which we performed completely new dramas, like the Overcoat by Gogol, classical pantomimes, modern mimes, and I had a complete cast, you know, they were girls and boys, you know, a complete company for 12 years. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the pantomime theatre has to be subsidized, like ballet is, and it's yes. all subsidized. It's a very, it goes now in cultural, um, well, you have to have much money to, to entertain, to carry a whole company, full scale, a whole year, you know. And then I did my one-man show and I became world famous for, yeah. for that. In fact, you said last night that uh, mime, and I quote you, expresses the deepest feelings and aspirations of man. Does this definition, in fact, depend on your own experiences? I knew it a long time. Though we don't know how the mimes in the old times played, we don't know how the Greek and the Roman mimes played, but there are some of their names which are still known today. If you go to the, to the Bibliothèque, National Bi Bibliothèque, and you ask about Roman and Greek mimes, you will hear the names of Batil, of uh, Theocrit, who wrote for Mimo Drama, he was a Greek author. You have, um, there is a great, uh, uh, you, they speak about 6,000 mimes living only in Rome. But of course, we have to wait the comedy at the latter period with yes. all the characters, you know, which have influenced Punch later, yes. and which have been Pulcinella. Arlequino, Brighella, Pietrolino, Columbine, and some of the characters went from the English clown and went also to the musical. And here again we have the story of the silent films, and we have the story of the Madame Mime school from which I come from, which is a French branch. But I think that what we have done, what I have pursued, is to create a mime theater. That means to show that through nothing, we could create a whole entity that through, through the invisible, we could create visible. Yes. And that I don't go to the mountain, the mountains comes to me. And when I do the fish, I become the fish, I become the ocean, I become the sea. At the same time, it's very near the Indian philosophy of everybody now in the universities particularly speak very much about Zen, you know. Yes. But very few people know what really Zen is. It's a very easy word when you read it, but you know, if you know the book, The Art of Zen in the Art of Archery, mm -hmm. where the master, Zen master, says 
that he cannot miss his target with his arrow because he has become the target himself. Well, going on, on to this, you in fact suggested that your audience should form their own interpretations of your minds, but do in fact intend your work to carry any optimistic or, or pessimistic philosophy of your own? Well, I think there is there's not a question of, of having a philosophy of his own. I think that, let's face it, we have invented nothing. Since manhood exists, we both as a great philosopher, if they are the Greek or the Roman philosopher, they knew already about this destiny of, of humankind, life, death, what is after what, rebirth. There have been the uh, uh, Stoicians, like Socrates, they have been the sceptical philosopher, they have been Montaigne, they have been your, 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 your great philosopher, and it is always the same, like Hamlet said, to be or not to be, that's the question. But it ends at the end, the rest is silence. That means everything we can say about the world is the more we know the world, the more there are fools who make people laugh and cry, tumbling over a banana peel, or it's always the same, for the same reasons you laugh at, you laugh at because when it's kicked and it's not yourself, or you laugh because you take, um, I would say, a certain joy from the frustrations you have, and you are relieved from it when you see a somebody do the job for you. Yes. I think that always the public has loved the defendant of the orphan and the widow. And the hero, like Don Quixote, have always struggled against windmills. I think that we have not advanced very much. No. But one thing we know, that what is beyond laughing, what is beyond crying, and this interpretation is maybe very personal, but at the same time, it's in the heart of everyone. Yes. And when I do numbers like the cage, or like the mask maker, I want just to reveal men who is so vulnerable, who is so ephemeral, the moment of solitude, that after a laughing mask, man is revealed completely in a complete silence and it's solitude. It's not sad, it's poetic. Yes. Because even solitude can be very poetic and sadness is not, is not I, I love sadness sometimes because after sadness you know there's joy again and sometimes you say music is so beautiful that I want to cry. Well, it's a beauty uh, because you know that if it's marvelous, it's not going to last. And then you are sad. The, 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 the impact the cage is, is somewhat different. I mean, <coughs> the man at the end is inevitably never free. This is presumably... Well, free. this is Kafka, of course. Yeah. Uh, you do the cage. The problem is you go, your man is trapped in a cage. He goes out of the cage to find a bigger cage. He's trapped in the cage and he's left in the cage. Now, some people say to me, why is it so pessimistic? I say, well, after all, when he goes out, we are anyhow another cage because real freedom is in you yes. but we have not achieved real freedom because there is a misinterpretation about freedom freedom is not to do what you want because if you want to do what you want to do you have no respect for the other freedom is to do what you want without harming and the other without destroying the other but for the interest of the majority in a good sense not humiliating anyone giving the justice and love to everyone. Of course, I speak about a wonderful world which has not happened yet and it is not to come for long, long years. But the struggle artists or scientists yes. or people who philosophers do is to bring some light and consciousness in people. And I think that education is very important. From the start, a young man should learn what respect is, what dignity is, what pride is in a good sense, what tradition means to live today and to make the future, and to know the real values, but not to, to destroy values, because if you destroy values, you have no, no, you're not going to find better values. Okay. But if you respect the values, you can renew values and build. Well, this is what we in the theater, we try to do. We never destroy the old theater. We never make a mockery about the Greek and Roman theater. Mm -hmm. Shakespeare is still today a very modern writer, yes. so it's Bernard Shaw. And I think concerning mine, even if I do modern mine, like Strike and the Wind, maybe the Romans and the Greeks did it too. I don't know. 
But the mass maker is not only Marcel Marceau. It is you, it is you, it is every man who puts on different masks in his life, like society. It demasks a certain hypocrisy. We have all seven, nine, ten masks. And what is our real face, which is revealed to us at the moment of truth? Fine. Uh, you mentioned uh, the English school of mine earlier. Um, and in fact, much of, much of the laughter that your performance gener generates is reminiscent of your own heroes, Chaplin, Stanlaw, and Keaton. Did you ever meet any of them? Oh, yes. You see, uh, Chaplin and Keaton will become classics. They are already classics. Though they played in the 20s, and we have known that there's a great return to the 20s, even the young generation today has a, a crave for 25, even in fashion and in writing and in look brushed in the theater, look uh, all the revival of the old films, yes. which were in the 30s. Now, I think that Keaton and Chaplin were very great mime artists. I met Chaplin in 67 in Paris, and I had never met him before. I knew Keaton. I was a very good friend of Stan Laurel. I knew very well Harper Marx, the Marx Brothers. Mm -hmm. And when I, I played, they saw the show and they could make a correlation between their stylized art in the movies and the stylized art I use in the theater, which is not, which is different, because they, they use scenery and props. I don't use any scenery and any prop. That means that much is revealed through the imagination. It's also uh, like a magician who makes appear and disappear props. And they were aware that though our art are completely different concerning technique, we all trace one thing, it's the vulnerability of the human soul. Yes. Fine. I'd like to, there's so much I'd like to ask you about, but I must conclude with one question. Um, is there anything that you are unable to convey by mind? Oh, there are many things I cannot convey by mind. I think it is an art which has, in a certain way, to be restricted. Uh, there are some words which are so fantastic, but they are spoken, songs, music tunes, but mine has to choose in its own world is what is best in silence. Mm -hmm. And this is why I have kept always a choice in my repertoire, doing the cage, the mask maker, use maturity, old age and death. I think that mime shows better what words cannot express when there is an extreme situation, or a dream, or a state of mind, a transformation, how a flower becomes a tree, how the, how a fish becomes a, another element, how a monkey becomes a man, how, you see, this transformation, how a young man becomes an old man, how an old man becomes a young man. This elusive transformation, which is a real moment of truth because I don't need to put on a beard, I don't need to, to stop the show and to have really happening. I think that mime is, after all, the elliptic way of expressing the most situations in a very short time. And one even could say that the mime is the shortest distance between two points. And the rest, of course, is the development I have to find through inspiration, the school, there's something very important. If I want the mind to go on for the future, if I want it to become an art as powerful, as important as music, or as ballet, there have to be definitely a transmission. You see, language, I speak because I have learned it at school. I wouldn't be able to talk to you now. Mm -hmm. But if I have no language, and if I want to transmit mine, then I have to have a school, and with that school, I will carry on the wonderful art of mine. Well, let's hope that in the future that we have a faculty of mime at the university. Monsieur Marceau, thank you very much. I thank you too.